Hello, and welcome to Boppy Approved Movies. My name is Boppy. And I'm Natalie. In our podcast, we will review and critique my favorite PG-13 movies. Movies that I wasn't allowed to watch until I turned 13. Every week, Natalie and I will watch a new PG-13 movie. And I'll see if Boppy's movies live up to the hype. Which, of course, they will. Today, we're going to be watching Titanic. Before we begin, there will be spoilers. If you haven't seen the movie and don't want it to be spoiled, press pause and come back when you're finished. Now, Poppy, tell me the deets on this movie. Okay. Titanic came out in 1997 with a runtime of 3 hours and 14 minutes. A long movie. Definitely a long movie. We were going to watch it over two days, but then we ended up watching it in just one day. It can be streamed on Showtime. It was written and directed by James Cameron. The main stars are Leonardo DiCaprio, Kate Winslet, and Billy Zane. Leonardo DiCaprio is in what movie that we already watched? Inception. Inception. You should go watch your episode on Inception. Episode number uh, 10, I think. I don't know. Fun fact, this is by far the longest movie we have watched and probably will ever watch on popular approved movies. It's also the highest grossing movie at the time of release. It's also a very expensive movie to make, about $200 million. People say it actually costs more to make the movie than it would have taken to make the Titanic in 1997. And the Titanic was not as huge boat, so that's kind of like insane. I know, right? All right, so what do you think, Nat? Well, I thought it was a long movie. I the first, like you said earlier, we were going to do it in two goes. And then I was like, it's okay, it'll be one go. But three hours is a lot longer than it seems. Yeah, there's a lot of parts to it. Although, in the recap, it didn't seem like it was that hard. Like, it's not going to be the longest recap, but but it, but it is a really long movie. And because it was so long, I felt like a lot of parts were boring. Like, they went too long. Like you think it could have got cut short? Yeah. Especially the very beginning. It was just a really long part. Okay. I thought it was still an overall good movie. What did you rate it? A four stars. Four stars? Oh, man. I thought you liked it more than that. I, when you were watching it, it seemed like you were really enthralled, even to the point where <laughs> you didn't want to like get another movie. You, I mean, you didn't want to stop watching the movie. You wanted to actually finish it. Yeah, I just figured that it wouldn't be as long as it was. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's actually, it's kind of like a two-part movie, really. It's like a love story and then like an action movie. So, yeah. A little bit of both. Why don't we get into the recap? The movie begins in present time when an expedition team, headed by Brock Levitt, in search of the heart of the ocean, a priceless diamond. It was last owned by Cal Hockley, a passenger on the Titanic. They find Hockley is safe and the diamond is not there. Instead, they find a drawing of a woman wearing the heart of the ocean. I don't know how the painting is not, like, all washed up and stuff. And then when they take it out, it's, like, perfectly fine. Yeah, like a perfect painting. Didn't get ruined at all. Like, what type of radioactive paint was was being used on He was using pastels, wasn't he? Uh, Charcoal, Charcoal. I think. You would think that would wash off, right? Yeah, because it's pencil, you know? If you put pencil on a piece of paper, it just gets all muddy. Maybe it was in a vacuum-sealed bag. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> Later, Brock is interviewed on a TV show, and he shows his drawing to the reporter. Rose, an elderly lady, sees a TV show and tells her granddaughter that the picture is of her. Up until this point, the movie was going really slow. I was like, oh no, this is so slow. By that point, it was like 15 minutes already over just like this little part. And I was like, is the whole movie going to be like this? Yeah, I see, because they were... They were expeditions, so they were showing like live footage of the Titanic, the wreckage of the Titanic at the bottom of the ocean. Maybe that's a little boring, I guess, for you to watch. Yeah. All right. Rose and her granddaughter contact Brock, and they come onto the ship to tell him about the night the Titanic sank. He brought her fish. She brought he she brought like four hundred bags, right? Like she brought her whole life. She was going to live there. Uh huh. And she brought her fish. Rose starts telling the story, and it's a flashback. We go back to the departure day of the Titanic. We see young Rose, her mother Ruth, and her fiancé Cal board the Titanic through the first class door. We also see Jack and Fabrizio get on through the third class entrance. Jack had won their tickets in a poker game. Against against a guy named Olaf and a guy named Sven, like in Frozen. Right, they'd be two guys that have the the Frozen character's name. (laughs) Ha ha ha. 
On the Titanic, Rose's accommodations are lavish and spacious. On the other hand, Jack is sleeping in a small room with three roommates on bunk beds. Jack and Fabrizio explore the ship and reach the bow of the ship when Jack screams the most famous line from the movie, I'm the king of the world! It's one of those movie quotes that are very famous. Oh. I guess you didn't know that. <laughs> I don't even remember him saying that. Well, he was on top of, like, they were both on top, like, right at the corner of the ship, in the front of the ship, remember? Mm-hmm. We will move on. Jack later sees Rose and he falls in love. Is this the point where he was like, look at the dolphins? That was with him? They did it together or was it when he was with her? I don't know. But at some point there was dolphins and he was like, look at the dolphins. And the dolphins hadn't even jumped yet. And then they jumped after. I'm like, bro's a psychic. He knows that the dolphins were going to, he knew dolphins were there. Yeah. He said, look at the dolphins jumping. And then they jumped after he had said that. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's funny. You mentioned it when we were watching it. Anyways, he sees Rose, falls in love with her. Typical love movie. They see someone and go, oh, I love you. And I'm going to spend the rest of my life with you. Which he does. No spoilers. Mm. Keep moving. Well, not really. The rest of his life. At <laughs> dinner, Rose is exhausted with all the aristocracy and runs away. She gets to the edge of the ship and is about to jump when Jack talks her out of it. He tells her that if she jumps, so will he. She agrees to come back aboard, but stumbles. He saves her, and the crew arrests him, thinking he was grabbing her. Rose stands up for him. Cal and his bodyguard, Mr. Lovejoy, were going to pay Jack for his help, but Rose objects, and Cal invites him to dinner with the first-class patrons. That night, Cal shows Rose the heart of the ocean. The next day, Rose and Jack hang out to get to know each other. Jack tells her he doesn't have a home, that he's a free spirit and goes where the wind takes him. He shows her his art. Rose tells Jack that she feels trapped. She doesn't love Cal and is only marrying him because her mom is making her. They need his money. Rose envies Jack's freedom. I think it's so sad that in like all these oldie days movies or like just movies that were kind of in this time that like most of the main thing was like this girl is marrying this guy but she's only doing it because she's forced to. And it's just like always that what happens, and then there's this guy that comes in. Why are they never actually finding someone that they like? Whenever they're forced into relationships, they're always forced because of their parents and stuff. I guess for in this case, they just needed the money. So that night, Molly Brown, a passenger, helps Jack by lending him her son's tuxedo, and now if they go to the fancy dinner. I don't, I don't remember. But was he like, "What are you gonna wear?" And then he was like, "Hmm, this." Did he? I don't think he did that. Did he do that? I don't think so. I feel like that would have been so stereotypical. Yeah, that would have been a kind of line that, you know, in another movie. That makes sense. But he, they never wondered. I think Molly just knew he didn't have a, the dress, a tuxedo to wear. So He found like a mom in her. Yeah. At dinner, Ruth and Cal constantly remind Jack of his station. At the end of the dinner, all the men leave for cigars and brandy. And Jack goes to his own way. But not before passing Rose a note for them to meet later. He does it in like a handshake, right? Yeah, I think he or he like kisses her hand. Does he, does he do that? They do that, you know, like the kiss their hand kind of thing. No high fives here. <laughs> no high fives. I don't remember how he did it, but I, he did grab her hand and maybe he kissed her hand and then he like left it in their hand. It was so dramatic. <laughs> it was beautiful. Rose meets Jack and they go to the third class area where they're partying it up. They are dancing to lively music, live music too, and drinking beers. Burrs. Burrs. Rose fits right in and dances and gets drunk like the rest of them. Did she throw up? Uh, probably. Isn't that that scene where we see her throw up on him like in all the other On movies? her shoes. On, his, on his shoes. On both. Everybody's shoes. Everyone's shoes. <laughs> Everyone's just walking around with vomit shoes. Everybody has dirty shoes. That's yeah. always what happens in movies. Everybody has dirty shoes. So the, uh, the next movie we're going to watch, there was a scene where there was throw up on their shoes. And in 10 Things I Hate About You, she vomits on. His shoes. She, she vomits on him. Vomits on him. And in Mean Girls, she vomits on him as well. <laughs> yeah. A lot of vomiting everywhere. Anyways, let's move on. Why, move are we, why are we always having so much vomit? I don't know. We've, We've talked about this before. Maybe I shouldn't even brought it up because we didn't even see her vomit. We just assumed that. All right. Anyways, let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> because every time you drink Natalie, when you become an adult, you will vomit and be sick forever and ever. That's Unless horrible. I'm a heavyweight. <laughs> and then you'll just throw up more. The next morning, Cal is angry and turns over the table because of Rose's partying. Ruth is also angry at Rose and forbids her from seeing Jack. 
that's not the response. You don't just be like, you went to a party table flip. Yeah. Especially since it's not like he's going to clean it up. He just left. Yeah. He just let the the servants clean it up. Plus, it's probably expensive China because back in the olden days, that stuff's super expensive. Yeah, like all the fine China that was on the Titanic, right? Probably as soon as he knocked it over. Mm -hmm. I do that every day. I usually turn over tables when I'm angry, so. Later, Jack goes to the first class, and he professes his love to Rose. He loves her. That's kind of soon. Love. It's like Cupid's arrow attacks. You can't do anything about it, Natalie. Mm, you can. <laughs> Later that night, Rose goes back to Jack, and they go to the bow of the ship, and they kiss. They leave, and they go to her sitting room, and Jack draws Rose wearing nothing but the heart of the ocean. Like... Like one the of them French that... girls. <laughs> right, there's that other, like, uh, draw me, what is it? Draw me like one of your French girls. And that's actually the same picture that Brock found later. You know, that is perfectly fine and mint condition. Perfectly. It actually looked nicer. Didn't it yeah. look nicer? Yeah. I think like dozens of years in the It ocean. was aged, it aged like a fine wine. Exactly. Mr. Lovejoy comes and they run away. They hide in a car where they are intimate. Inappropriate! You disgusting. You disgusting indeed. Rose leaves a note for Cal breaking up with him and tells Jack that she will go with him when they get off the ship. That's like the equivalent of breaking up with someone on text nowadays. Yes. Leaving them in a... He's, he's, she slid into his DMs and said, we're done, right? <laughs> yeah. Then the Titanic hits an iceberg and water gushes in. Rose and Jack go back to warn Ruth and Cal. Mr. Lovejoy frames Jack by planting the diamond in his coat. And then he's arrested and handcuffed to a pipe in the lower levels. This is kind of where the movie changes, right? From the beginning, it was like a love story. And now we have an action movie. So the rest of the movie is pretty much an action film. With a lot of death. Lots of death, yes. Lots of death. Soon after the damage is assessed, the engineer says that the Titanic will sink. Unfortunately, there are only enough lifeboats for about half the people aboard the Titanic. I still don't... I get that's so stupid. They should have had more lifeboats, or they shouldn't have had so many people go on the boat. I think the whole point of the Titanic is everybody was that it was an unsinkable ship. There was even a line, not even God Himself can sink the ship, right? Someone said that. Point being, they they didn't think that it could sink, so why even have lifeboats in the first place? Well, anything could sink. I hate to think that they only had lifeboats for the first class. Like, that's the only thing that they cared about. I hate to think that's why they did it, as opposed to them thinking that it would never sink. Or even if they thought that the boat wouldn't sink at all, then why did they put boats in there in the first place? That's a good point. Yeah. Women and children are boarded first. Rose and her mother are about to board a lifeboat when Rose decides to go back for Jack. Cal goes back to get money to bribe his way off the ship and the diamond. Rose gets to Jack and the room is filling up with water. She goes out, finds an axe, and uses it to set him free. Jack and Rose go out to find out third class is locked on their level with no chance for escape. They hope the third class passengers break through the lock gates and get to the upper decks. I still don't get why they like locked them in. Like they're gonna they like even if they don't get a boat, like at least they can have a chance, you know? What I read later is that that never really happened. And they didn't have lock gates down there. Because they were only going to let the women and the children off the boats anyway, so... Yeah. Yeah. On the top deck, Rose will not get on the lifeboat without Jack. Cal comes and gives her his jacket, which we find out later has the diamond in it. She gets on and immediately changes her mind, and she and Jack run off together. Cal finds a way onto the lifeboat, and Jack and Rose find their way to the highest point of the ship. The way he gets onto the boat is just so sad. Yeah, he he finds a little he just, kid crying. He like regardless of that like was that kid just gonna be crying there like was he just gonna die because like no one really noticed him or cared about him that just child was just randomly on the boat her parents were nowhere to be found well they might have got lost in the confusion oh that's true yeah i mean everybody trying to figure out their way out the parents were probably looking for that baby and... it's crazy to me too that also that kid probably only survived because he did something so terrible uh, oh, because Cal did something so terrible? Uh-huh. Well, the kid survived. So, as we can see, the real hero of this movie was Cal. He saved a whole child. He saved the whole child. There you go. <laughs> Ten reasons why Cal is the best character in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> Let's see. You can find a Reddit uh, subreddit on that. Cal is actually the really good guy in <laughs> Titanic. 
All right, let's get back to it. So Jack and Rose get to the highest point of the ship. Everyone is falling off. The ship breaks in half and eventually falls into the ocean. Jack and Rose swim as hard as they can to get to the surface. The water is freezing, and Jack finds a door and helps Rose to get on top of it. All right, controversy number one. He tries to get on the two, but they both almost fall. He decides to swim next to her to make sure she survives. He tells her to live her life and never give up. What do you say, Natalie? Should he have gotten on the door? What do you think? I think so. I think they could have found a way to balance him on there. Yeah, I, there was that Mythbuster, that TV show, uh-huh. where they showed, they put the door in the water, and then they were able, if they, she would have used her life as, and, but these are like very smart, genius people who have all the time in the world in perfect conditions to think about how to solve the problem. I think what he did, because everybody hates on this part, right? Like, she's so greedy, why didn't she make space for him on the door, you know? Yeah. I think he tried. It didn't work. And then he's like, okay, listen. Yeah, he, like, fell off. He fell, She fell off. Yeah, both of them. Yeah. And then they were, like, worried about time, I think. Yeah. Because it's going to be too cold eventually and then it won't matter. So I, I like to think that everybody stopped the hate. Also, throughout this part where, like, everyone's escaping, and then there's, like, so many flashing lights, and, like, it's it's giving epilepsy. (laughs) It's, like, what if some kid, like, got... There was no warning at all in this movie, and there's, like, flashing lights the whole time. Oh, the movie? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Maybe that was before they even had those warnings on TV. Oh, yeah, that's true. I was, like... It was, like, a Star Wars type of moment with all those flashing lights. (laughs) That's true. Later, one of the lifeboats goes back to find survivors, and everyone except Rose has frozen to death. She lets go of Jack, and he sinks to the bottom. Then she whistles for help and is rescued. Later, when she reaches America, she hides from Cal and her family and changes her last name to Dawson, which is Jack's last name. That whistle thing was the smartest thing she could have done. Yeah, because she didn't have the strength to scream out loud for them to hear her. Yeah, like, I would have never thought. I'd just be like, eh, and dead. <laughs> yeah, you're like, all right, I'm just You have no me. strength, no brain power. You're, like, freezing to death. Yeah. You don't think, I'm going to go swim over there, grab that whistle from that one guy, and then just blow on it until I get help. Like, no, you don't think of that. Like, she thought about getting the whistle, but she didn't think about the boat. Like, or that guy on the boat. Couldn't have Jack gone on to that little boat with the whistle guy? No, he wasn't on a boat. He was on this, like, he was he well, was he, on, like, the front of the boat. Like, yeah, it broke he, off. But he died. So, yeah. I mean, if Jack would have, he would have died just the same. So, <laughs> yeah. All right, we go back to the present time. And Rose goes to the edge of the ship and drops the heart of the ocean overboard. She had it the whole time. She could have just sold it. Oh, or she could have given it out to science. Oh, yeah. We'll give it to Brock. Oh, yeah. think Brock was doing it for money, not for science. Oh. Because they were treasure hunters, right? She goes back to her room and goes to sleep. Then in a dream, and I say dream in quotation marks, young Rose sees Jack waiting for her on the Titanic with everyone from the ship around them. They kiss. The end. Real quick, Natalie. Was it a dream? I think she died. Yeah, I think it's up in the air, right? Like, either she died or she was having a dream. I think she died because she went on to the Titanic. And, like, it was all of the people that had died, like, in the movie. Right, nobody else that was alive. No, it was just the dead people. Yeah, I think so. I like to think Plus, it was, like, this huge bright light, you know? And also, if we go back to the beginning of the movie, she brought all her possessions. Did you think she was going to die? Like, do you think that she knew she was going to die? Like, it was her time to go? Well, why would bringing all your possessions have anything to do with you die? Like, she wanted to die around all of her things. Like, she was, you know, all her pictures were there, all the things that she wanted. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true, I guess. Also, I also thought, did you think that she was going to jump over the ship? Like, right at the end? No. I, I did. The first time I watched the movie, like, she gets on the, she gets her little 99-year-old feet on the, on the edge of the ship. I thought, just kind of like how Rose did when she was younger, uh-huh. I thought she was going to jump over, you know, to go be with go be with Jack, right? Like, you know, It doesn't make sense. She's going to die in like a week anyways. <laughs> or yeah. a night, apparently. Yeah. Well, you didn't know that. She didn't. I mean, I guess she did. She could have just waited for like a few months. <laughs> All right. I like this movie. I think it's really cute. I'm watching it again. I understand why it's such a popular movie. It's, it's a nice love story. and. I just think it was really cute. So Leonardo DiCaprio is likable in the movie, and 
Although I did think beautiful. he looked kind of young. Like, he looked, like, younger than she looked. You think so? I don't know why, but he just had this, like, more young-looking face. Yeah, he did. He had, like, a, a baby face, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Could this movie still be made today? Probably, especially since it, like, had a lot to do with the Titanic and all that happened. Like, I don't really like Cal's whole character. He was just kind of rude to her all the time. And, like, he didn't really treat anyone with respect, though. So I don't know if that's a sexist thing. He was, like, sexist, but he was just an awful person in general, you yeah, know? Yeah, he was just an awful human. I think it was him who said it. He was like, women and machinery don't mix. When there's, like, probably a bunch of women mechanics out there, you know? Mm-hmm. And then, again, he, like, slapped her. He would shushed her all the time. He was just not a good person. No, he was pretty bad. He was, like, mean to other people, but he was, like, especially just rude to all the women. And I don't think that's right. Yeah. And obviously, he was the definitely the villain, even though he saved that child at the end of the movie. Yeah. But- I mean, he, he's he's the true winner of the story, but, you know. He was... Sadly, he was the winner, right? Because he ends up getting off the boat, too. And I think Rose talked about how he married a rich lady and then, like, he well, was he all good. He died in, like, the stock market or crash, right, or something like that? Yeah, it was, it was something. It was so random. Yeah. But, like, he was fine. I was like, what is this? This isn't Disney. Like, what happened to the kaboom, kaboom, he falls off a boat, you know? Yeah. He should have got his kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And his bodyguard, Mr. Lovejoy, we never even see what happens to him. Which is sad, but, like, I guess that's kind of life. Not everyone gets what they deserve. That's true. Or don't deserve. Yeah. Anything else about being made today? Nope. Does it pass the Bechdel test? It does! (laughs) All right. The Bechdel test is a test that judges to see if there is enough female representation in movies. There are three criteria. The first one is, are there two named characters that are female in the movie? Aha, uh-huh. there's Rose, and then there's um, Molly Brown, okay. and then Rose's mom. Ruth. Ruth. Then Rose, old old lady Rose, has a granddaughter, too. Livy or something like that? Yeah, she had a name, so she counts. Yeah. Okay. All right. The second question or criteria is, do the women talk to each other? Yeah, in the beginning of the movie, she talks to her granddaughter, and then her mom is always talking to her since in the flashback part of the the main part of the movie, she's like, went with her mom and some of the other fancy ladies. All right, and the third criteria is, do they talk to each other about anything other than a man? I remember only one instance. Okay. And it was when Rose's mom and her other fancy lady friends were talking trash about molly brown because she doesn't speak like a lady or whatever they said right molly brown was poor and then she became a millionaire with something that she did so she wasn't like the old established rich so she didn't belong they called her new money new money yeah all right. She, like, cursed a lot, and they were like, she's not ladylike. She's not, like, that's not how women are you supposed to be. You also notice her. She's not, she acts different, right? She's a little bit more open-minded than She doesn't are. follow the traditional superstition, not superstition. Stereotype? Stereotypical, like, image, I guess, of that, in that time of, like, a rich, formal lady. So they just didn't like her. Which, back to the made today part, is just, like, kind of sad, because, like, Shouldn't people be supporting each other, you know? Like, not just always bringing each other down. Oh, definitely. For sure. Especially since she's, like, just new to their whole rich lady industry thingy. Right. You would think they'd be like, oh, it's a new person. Welcome. Not just like, ew, did you see what she was wearing? Ew, she just said a curse word. I hate her. (laughs) So gross. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. That's funny. Like, um, they remind me of the gossip mongers. That's what we call them from Edward Scissorhands. Yeah. Same kind of thing, right? These group of ladies are just totally evil to anybody who's different. All right, anything else? We were all, like, crying throughout the movie. Sure. It's a pretty sad movie. Yeah, a lot of people died. And I started crying because, like, the band was doing their whole thing where they started playing. And then I thought of my friend, and I started laughing. And Sophia thought I was a sociopath. Okay, explain that. My friend, who doesn't know how to swim, my friend Sam, was like, if I fell into the middle of the ocean, uh-huh. 
And I think I would survive <laughs> because I could float on my back. And we're like, how do you know which direction is shore and you're going to freeze to death? And then Sam's just like, ah, uh, it'll be okay. <laughs> so Sam felt that she could survive this situation. Yeah. And while the rest of the movie is just like people sliding down a boat dying. So you can, you could understand why when people are dying and you're like laughing. <laughs> Your sister looked over to you like, what is wrong with you? Why are you laughing at the death of these people? 1,500 people died. At least that's uh, what they said throughout the movie. There was a lot of facts at the end. And like, there was obviously not a lot of things that were true. But I wonder if those facts were real. I think so. I'm not, I think they're not going to make up those facts. Those are probably going to be real. Everything else is probably fictional. But Yeah. There was actually a Jay Dawson on the boat. So they didn't do it on purpose. They didn't base it on this person, Jay. I don't know if his name was Jack or John or whatever it is. And that person is buried somewhere, I think, in England or Ireland. And that's like one of the most famous grave sites that people go and visit. Because Jay of Dawson the movie. from the Titanic movie, yeah. But it's not, it's not based on that character. That guy got famous and he didn't even do anything. He died, unfortunately, under this terrible circumstance. He probably gets so many flowers and he's like, is that you, mom? He's, he's fine. He it's just a bunch of random strangers. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? No. Thank you for tuning in to Poppy Approved Movies. If you like this episode, make sure to subscribe, rate, and review on your favorite podcast app. We put out an episode every Monday. If you want to suggest a movie for us to watch and critique... Email us at poppyapprovedmovies at gmail.com. That's poppyapprovedmovies at gmail.com. No spaces, no caps. We'll try our best to get to your suggestion. And remember, it has to be PG-13. Next week, we're watching The Wedding Singer, so I hope you join us. I'm Poppy. And I'm Natalie. See you next time. Bye!